Except no laughter. I thought you said play it for laughs. I said comedy, mate, not laughs. Laughing is anti-comedy. I don't want to be told when to laugh. Other people's laughter isn't telling you anything. It's just an innocent expression of collective jollity. Collective jollity? What's collective jollity got to do with comedy? <laughs> comedy should be exclusive and elitist. If everybody gets it, then what's to get? The joke. And there's your problem right there, Burbage. In comedy, jokes are worse than laughter. <laughs> Mr Burbage, halt rehearsals. I've had the most brilliant idea. A, a way to uplift and inspire, to fill our theatre with joy, to move people so much that they tell their friends and perhaps even return a second time themselves. No, oh, do not jest, Will. For word of mouth and repeat business are the holy grail of the theatre owner. For such things we would sell our souls. Then pop your soul in a bag, mate, and I'll take it with me. Cos I've got the answer. Music. Music? Oh, dear, well, you really have lost your touch. We already use music, had you not noticed? We strum our lutes at the beginning and we blow our pipes at the end. <laughs> and from what I've heard, Condell, you blow a few pipes in the interval too. <laughs> Whoopsy phobic or brave and edgy? You decide. <laughs> oh, God, he's doing his laugh again. Uh, I thought you said you didn't like laughter, Kim. Group laughter, mate. Everyone laughing together. That's never right. But solo laughter, or oh, me laughing very loudly and intrusively at something that nobody else finds funny, that's the mark of a comic genius. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm trying to tell you my brilliant idea. I didn't just mean music at the start and the finish, Burbage. I meant throughout. For add music to theatre, and what do you have? Theatrical music. Yes. N no, no. Musical theatre. Oh, my God, I love it. <laughs> love what, Condell? Mr Shakespeare has scarcely begun to explain himself. I don't care, I love it anyway. Just those two words, musical theatre. They speak to my soul. Of course they do. I'm talking about a play with songs. What's not to love? Um, everything. Let me think this through, Will. Are you suggesting that we find somebody to write songs to fit your plays? Well, I, I thought that at first, mm. uh, you know, work with a composer on an original score. But then I thought, no, we need guaranteed hits, lots of them. And how do we get those? By using songs that are hits already. Yes, by St Bernard's buttered balm cakes. Yes, <laughs> I'm on fire today. First, I invent the original stage musical and then instantly make it obsolete by inventing the greatest hits musical. <laughs> Talk me through the detail. Well, how does my Henry VI part one open, for example? At the funeral of Henry V, Bedford, Gloucester, Exeter, Warwick, Winchester, Somerset are gathered to mourn the king. Each speaks at length. Mm. A soldier brings news that France is lost. Further extended monologues ensue. It's a very long scene. Very long. <laughs> like mad long. It is not long at all. 25 minutes at most and it flies by. But <laughs> I admit that you don't exactly go home humming it. But imagine if, instead of opening with 15 pages of blank verse, we opened with, Now is the month of Maying. My God, it is a thought. A brilliant, magical thought. I love, love, love it. I can see it now. Act one, scene one, London, 1422. The street is filled with lovable Cockney characters, uh, uh, cheeky street urchins, uh, costermongers, pretty flower girls, a perambulating top or two. Enter the new king! Strike up the players! And the whole company sing now is the month of moon! Two minutes later, the entire audience will be on their feet with their arms swaying in the air. La 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 la